Hello, this is Gary at Jack Raven Bushcraft. Thank you for watching our video. Uh, this week I'm going to look at some alternatives to using a wooden bearing block for bow drilling. It's a little damp today, so I've taken shelter in our woodland classroom. Uh, but what I want to talk about are a couple of alternatives, or, or at least um, a couple of alternatives that we could use for our bearing block when we're bow drilling. So typically, I'm going to grab something like this. Uh, so it's a, this is a piece of horn beam. Um, I've just kind of flattened it off on one side here. It fits nice and comfortably into my hand, and this is going to, to work perfectly well but there are other things that we could potentially use and some of those things might well um, improve our performance with bow drilling so if you remember back to my previous videos on bow drilling and I will add some links into those when we've got our spindle so this is the top this is the bottom we want the friction to be down this end and as little friction as possible up this end so that's why I kind of I'm using the, the horn beam here, partly because we've got lots of horn beam around, but mostly because it is a nice dense wood and we can kind of reduce the friction in this end. In fact, we could potentially put some uh some vegetation in there, some leaves, something nice and shiny, um, to again just add or sorry to reduce the, the amount of friction that's going on up there. But we could also, for instance, use something like this. So this is a, just a uh, pebble that I found down on the beach. This one has got a, a hole in. So there. Now my understanding is that the, this is created by uh, a mollusk of some description, which is able to kind of create the hole in there. So I live on the coast. Uh, I'm frequently walking along the the beach. If, so if I'm not in the woods, I take Willow for a walk along the beach. So I'm, I'm kind of always keeping my eye out for a stone with a hole in it. And whilst I often find pebbles with holes in, the, the, I, often the pebble doesn't particularly fit in my hand comfortably or the hole is in the, the wrong part of the stone to be um, useful. So this one though, it does kind of fit quite nicely into the into my hand and the hole is more or less in the, the centre of my hand here. So of course when I'm bow drilling, I want the spindle to feel if it's in the centre of my hand. And I suspect that this stone is going to do that for me. So the beauty of this, I'm going to get much less resistance at the top, much less friction at the top. So another great advantage of living on the beach is that I can find shells with relative ease. So here I've got a couple of um, limpet shells. Uh, these are quite thick limpet shells as well. I have used these in the past um, and what I found was that so if you kind of hold it like this um, it can get quite hot quite quickly in your hand so we've got a couple of approaches so you can just stick one limpet shell in another to try to help out on that you can change your grip slightly on it so that you're holding it more in this kind of position uh, or what I've also done in the past is just to get a piece of wood sorry I dropped my shell get I've used uh, I got a piece of wood something like this and then I've just hollowed out carved out the the limpet shell shape and then just use a bit of pine resin glue to hold it in there um, and that's worked um, pretty well so what I'm going to do now is give both of those a go so you can see what uh, what is going on so I'm in my normal bow drilling stance here uh, so first thing I'm going to get this uh, bedded in and I use my pebble to do that so I've got my pebble in my hand 
Like so. Now this is thrown in, uh, in nicely and I can feel it sliding on this pebble bearing block really easily, really smoothly. So, I'll pop that down a sec. And now I just need to cut my notch into the hearth board. So I'm looking at a 45 degree notch here. And as I say, I have done plenty of videos around these things in the past. So take a look at those. So as a reminder, I do the cor corner, corner, and then the middle. So flip the piece of wood around corner, corner, middle. So I just kind of work my way in there slowly. So there's a nice uh, 45 degree notch carved in there. 45 degrees, it's about the same uh, as the tip of a bushcraft knife, more or less. So now of course I can add in a, an ember pan here. So. And so now what I can do, pick my spindle and my bearing block up and have another go at it and hopefully produce an ember. So that was using the pebble as the bearing block and as you can see that was that produced a, an ember with um, well, great ease in fact the, like you could really feel the lack of resistance at the top of that pebble bearing block so now I'm going to swap over and give the um, the Olympic shell a try So yeah, so exactly the same set. Uh, this time I got the Olympic shells in my hand. Right, let's get myself set up. Start again, a little waft. 
if we move my foot just peel the half board away and there's another kind of ember produced with relative ease no I'll take that back another ember produced with great ease in fact um, so those uh, limpet shells again it's another one that really reduces the amount of friction at the top of your spindle whilst these uh, alternatives to using a wood on bearing blocks or limpet shells or a pebble with a hole in it they do decrease the amount of resistance at the top of your spindle there is no question of it it does make the whole bow drilling um, experience a, a little easier um, I wouldn't recommend that you kind of run out down to your local beach right now and try to find these things and then only ever use them uh, because you might well find yourself in a situation where you can't find um, a, a pebble such as this one or limpet shells. So it's something to add into your bushcraft toolkit, to your bow drilling um, repertoire. But it's not something that I would suggest that you rely on entirely. Still go back to using a, a good old wooden bearing block just to keep your hand in, um, so to speak. I hope that's something you found useful, something that you can add to your own bushcraft bushcraft repertoire, your own bushcraft skill set, something that can help you progress. Uh, I will endeavour to get some more content out next week. Uh, you can make sure you don't miss out on that. You can subscribe either to our YouTube channel or to our blog, either of which are Jack Raven Bushcraft. In the meantime, take care.